am better than you. Then why were you so easy to curse? The author of the journal, my brother. Man, the Owl House is getting good. We got some more horror elements, some pretty charming character development for Gus, a lot of gay moments, and some pretty interesting lore. How many times have I talked about this show on my channel again? Oh. Oops. So, despite me not talking about this show a lot, yes, I am a fan of the Owl House. It's something that I loosely keep up with in my spare time, alongside Amphibia, Tuka and Birdie, and a few other shows that I don't really talk about on this channel. Though despite my apparent disinterest and lack of talking about it publicly, I am passionate about these shows. It's just that alongside not really having the time to properly cover them in a way that is both coherent and digestible, I actually haven't really had anything to say about them. That, and sometimes it's nice to just enjoy things privately without having to make content about it. I think that all that's been said is what needs to have been said. Well, until today, that is. And yes, I promise that Ida's buff mom Gwendolyn has nothing to do with it. Anyways. While I was catching up on season 2, specifically the episode Keeping Up Appearances, I started to notice something involving our favorite owl lady, Ida. And what I noticed was, the curse that turns her into an owl monster really seems to be portrayed as if it were a mental illness. Now, hear me out until the end of the video on this if you think I'm coming completely out of left field with the comparison. This is something that I wanted to talk about because I heavily related to it, and I actually thought that if it was intentional, I sort of like the direction that it's going in so far, especially with the addition of Gwendolyn's behavior and dynamic with both of her daughters. It is sort of ironic that my first series video on this show would be about something like this, but I digress. So for those of you who know very little about the Owl House or haven't seen it yet, Edelyn Clawthorn is a witch on the Boiling Isles who was considered to be the most powerful and wanted magic user before her curse weakened her powers, preventing her from using them how she normally does. This curse turns her into an owl monster, usually with her mind being lost in the crossfire. When she loses control, she can become dangerous, however that isn't always the case depending on the full context and the severity of the situation. Lilith placed the curse on Ida when she was very young due to both jealousy and feeling neglected by their mother, though she didn't intend for it to be as severe as it actually ended up being. She was under the impression that the curse would last a day, long enough so that she could best her in a fight. However, it turned into something far more sinister and limiting. She very heavily regrets this, and even takes some of the curse onto herself so that Ida can at the very least return to her humanoid form after a close call with Emperor Bellos. Elixirs usually keep the curse at bay when it's getting bad, though sometimes it isn't enough depending on the severity. Now, for the Clawthorn family, this curse seems to have become a focal point of all of their relationships. Lilith works closely with Bellos in the capturing of Ida because he promises that he can cure her. Ida's mother is constantly looking for a cure to the point of it consuming her life, and Ida herself is dealing with it in her own way as it gets worse and causes her to struggle more than she has initially in the past. And due to the nature of it, the relationship between both her and her sister has weakened, as Lilith's guilt consumes her and forces her to align with something that Ida morally opposes. We don't know how this has impacted Mr. Clawthorn, if at all, but we can assume he's also been bothered by it considering the effect it's had on everyone else in his immediate family, and also due to Lilith's comment about reconnecting with him. There's still a lot to be learned about this curse, but it'll be nice to spend some time home and reconnect with Dad. Now, I want to take a look at how this curse is portrayed and how it was given, because there's a lot of striking parallels to those with some form of mental illness. And just a little bit of a disclaimer, although I'm not going to get very heavily into it, there is a content warning for talking about mental illness and trauma and everything under the sun regarding that. So first, we're going to take a look at how this curse was given. So Lilith, Ida's sister, initially cursed her because she was jealous of her natural talent with magic and her mother's supposed favoritism towards her younger sibling. She also did this to join the Emperor's Coven, as she knew that Ida was stronger than her and would win against her in a fight, essentially nixing her chance to ever join. Due to this jealousy, she cursed Ida in her sleep with the hopes that it would stifle her power and once again put her in the limelight. Or, at the very least, allow the two equal footing in terms of their magical prowess. This curse was one that was born from a place of familial hardship and overwhelming negative emotions and hurt, so it's no wonder that the physical manifestation of such a problem is monstrous, ugly, scary, and overwhelming. But does it really have to be so dangerous, or is it only as dangerous as it is without management? We'll get into that, but let's continue to talk about the semantics of the curse for just a bit longer. 
Generally speaking, family members have the capability of hurting you worse and deeper than those who you are only loosely acquainted with. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. These are the people who you are taught and conditioned to believe that they'll love you unconditionally no matter what. However, for a lot of people, this doesn't end up being the case. Being an unwanted child or having another family member betray you can hurt, confuse you, and mess you up. And without getting too much into the specifics regarding my own trauma, since it's not really something I feel like bringing up right now, I know firsthand just how damaging it can be to somebody's mental health and overall upbringing to be in a situation where they feel as though they're unwanted, unloved, misunderstood, or not accepted by their own family members. The direct result of this trauma can manifest itself in the form of mental illness, which can affect those in ways that are self-destructive as well as outwardly destructive towards others. Somebody growing up in an unstable environment may develop an anxiety disorder, depression, or even PTSD from unhealthy and potentially abusive familial relationships. Children are especially susceptible to this, as growing up in an unstable and restrictive and or unaccepting household in their formative years isn't allowing them to build healthy social skills with healthy relationships, making it more difficult to form meaningful bonds with others outside of their immediate family members when they're adults. And this, of course, may also lead to dissatisfaction and frustration at the inability to keep healthy relationships and friendships later in life, much like Ida struggles with before meeting Luce. There's a deeper conversation to be had on the full scope of effects as no two cases of trauma present themselves the exact same, but for this video we're only going to be focusing on the Clawthorn family. And I'm not implying here that their family is abusive, but it was 100% flawed and unhealthy in some aspects, those of which made the curse worse. But I'll cover the specifics of that all throughout the rest of this video. If we wanted to look at abusive families within the show, we could look at the blights, but... <sighs> Yeah, that's a whole video in of itself that involves its own complications. Anyways, before she was cursed, we've seen from the past episodes that Ida and Lilith had a very close relationship between Lilith's jealousy suffocated and choked out any healthy semblance of it. We see in Agony of a Witch that both sisters hold resentment towards each other, Lilith in the form of jealousy from both the power and attention that her sister had, as mentioned previously. Maybe you are stronger than me, but that made me work smarter. I became sharp, crafty. A lapdog for a tyrant! You always thought you were better than me! that I could never beat you in anything. And Ida in the form of feeling inadequate and not accepted by her sister due to both her curse and usage of wild magic. You've always looked down on me because I'm wild, but fortunately, that just made me work harder than you. Wild magic being the type that Emperor Bellos says is forbidden and punishable by death, and therefore is looked down on and considered immoral and wrong to use on the Boiling Isles. Well, petrification would be more accurate, but come on, it's basically death. Lilith wasn't the only one to look down on and pity Ida, even her mother was guilty of this as well, and to a much larger extent. I would argue that Gwendolyn herself was unintentionally the catalyst that made this issue worse, only furthering the agitation and tension between the two sisters. This resulted in the Elder Witch infantilizing Ida, suffocating her with good intentions, and completely and entirely neglecting Lilith as a result. In keeping up appearances, it's basically shown that Ida's mother, Gwendolyn, took this curse very seriously and treated it as though it were something to be ashamed of and something that Ida needed to be cured of or she would remain broken and unlovable. And as a result, Ida did become ashamed of it. She cut her family out of her life entirely, feeling as though she were a burden and fleeing to the human realm. She moved into the Owl House where she lives with Hootie and King, secluded and hidden from civilization. There's a reason that she didn't tell Luce or King that she was cursed, and that was because she she was ashamed. She was also afraid that the way that both of them would treat her and view her would change. Instead, she believed that dealing with this curse on her own was the only way that was acceptable because she wasn't putting a burden on others, struggling far more on her own than she would have with help. Asking for help is nothing to be ashamed of, but even in our modern society, mental illness is heavily stigmatized against, especially those who may have really ugly symptoms that are scary to both parties. Many people still look at those who seek out therapy as weak, even though that couldn't be further from the truth. And her mother and sister contributed to this and made her feel as if there were only one way, since their opinions and actions around her shifted once the curse was placed on her, both acting like they knew better and not listening to Ida regarding her own personal experiences and well-being. She was happy to manage the curse and came to terms with the fact that she had it. Everyone else, however, was dead set on curing it. 
And understandably, when she was only pitied and infantilized for struggling, she would want to keep her distance from whoever viewed her in such an insulting way. Ida didn't want Looser King treating her differently or specially, and so she hid it until she had no other choice but to reveal her secret to them once she reached a critical point with her curse and transformation. Lilith pitied and looked down on her, viewing her curse as a weakness and even using it against her in order to overpower her in combat, and Gwendolyn viewed her daughter as broken and suffering, making her ashamed of something that she had no control over, feeling as though she were only a burden on her and her family. Unintentional or not, this is why Ida has struggled so much up until this point. It was less of the curse itself that she was struggling with, and more how others treated and viewed her as a result. And if you notice, the curse only got worse when it was agitated. That agitation being through her mother looking down on her or Lilith pressuring her. So the stigma that came with it became an issue, even though she had gotten it under control with medication. Or, in the context of the show, elixirs. It's not very subtle, is it? So here's where the parallels come in. As I mentioned, familial problems and unstable relationships in childhood can lead to developing a mental illness, disorder, or personality disorder. It's not uncommon for an adverse event to happen in childhood, and then the child who went through said experience to develop symptoms of mental illness in direct consequence. The adverse event in question would be the falling out between Lilith and Ida. While in this case it's very literal since Lilith cursed Ida, they also had a falling out and grew apart after previously having been close. After this curse, it's heavily implied that the relationship became fully fractured, even though it was weakening before it fully broke due to their differences in morals regarding covens. We know that this is what led to Gwen trying to find a cure for Ida, going so far as to seek out multiple doctors and all types of medications and ways of healing her. This also extended to non-traditional and alternative types of medication as a desperate last-ditch effort, including the usage of pyramid schemes, but I'll get into that a little bit later. When Ida became sick due to her curse, her mother focused all of her energy and attention onto her and away from Lilith. This furthered the tension and put Lilith in a situation where she felt as though her mother wasn't proud of her and didn't love her, at least not on the same level that she did Edelin. In Keeping Up Appearances, we can see that she is very much bothered by her mother's unknowing and unintentional negligence. She even has this to say when she realizes she's still only focused on her younger sister. I think they're gonna heal Ida's curse or whatever? Uh oh is that so? Mother paying attention to Edelin again. I mean, it's not like I care. And as in the same case with Ida, Lilith's condition worsens when it's agitated. In this case, she's being agitated because she's feeling as though her mother is being negligent. Now here's where it starts getting interesting. While from a lore perspective, Lilith is affected by the curse because she cast a sharing spell on her sister so that it wasn't overbearing on her body and magic, she's suffering the same thing that Ida is on a fundamental level. Gwen's unintentional favoritism had adverse effects on both Clawthorn sisters, not just one of them. This this is, again, one of the potential consequences of having an unstable childhood. Having a mother who doesn't give you attention and instead only pays attention to your quote-unquote problem sibling would potentially cause some mommy issues, for lack of a better term. Just because Lilith wasn't vocal about her suffering and struggles doesn't mean that she wasn't troubled, and I think a lot of the times that's a common mistake that parents make. They think that the kids who very obviously need help and want attention are the ones that need attention, whereas the kids who are quiet and don't ask for it don't need it, when that isn't the case. Gwen is surprised to see that Lilith also has a similar problem since in her words, she's You were always so self-sufficient. <laughs> But I didn't give you the attention you deserved. Now, Gwen is a good mom. She owns up to the fact that she messed up and that she was only doing what she did out of the love for her daughters. However, she was so desperate for a cure that she sold family heirlooms and resorted to alternative medicine and conspiracy theories in order to find a cure. This also included going against the direct orders of doctors, or let's just say coven leaders, who knew what they were talking about and saying that the curse couldn't be cured but it could be managed, and she completely ignored them in favor of trying to find a cure. And she did this instead of listening to her daughter about having found something that worked for her. It may not have been a cure, but it made things manageable for her. And instead of listening, she took away her elixirs, called them a scam, and claimed that she knew better and only wanted what was best for Ida. This happens a lot of the time with well-intentioned parents. They don't listen to their kids, and they just want what's best for them. And so they look everywhere for a cure so that their child isn't suffering, at least in their eyes, and people trying to make a quick buck scheme against these people while they're at their most vulnerable. It's a truly vicious cycle 
cycle and it's disgusting that there are people out there who take advantage of desperate parents who just want to help their children. To be entirely and completely honest, and coming from a very personal place here, this entire segment made me incredibly uncomfortable due to how accurate it was. Now, not in a bad way, I'm not saying that it was bad writing or anything. If I thought it was bad writing, I wouldn't be making a video praising it. I just think it hit a little too close to home for me personally. It really reminds me of those self-proclaimed autism moms. You know the ones. The ones that think vaccines cause autism, and they make their child's autism into the boogeyman that ruined their lives instead of just listening to their kids to make both of their lives easier. Yeah, those types of moms. It just seems scarily accurate and that Gwen was so unwilling to actually listen to her child who was the one who was dealing with it that she put her through living hell with unproven methods of curing her because she thought that she knew what was best. And it's just really sad and unfortunately mirrors real life events and experiences a little too closely for it to be a coincidence, at least in my opinion. The last thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm pretty sure secures this as evidence that this is what this is meant to reflect is how the curse is presented from a visual perspective. Inside of Ida's mind, it's portrayed as this giant eldritch looking owl monster that towers over Ida, chasing her around as it takes control of her mind and body. It comes out when she's stressed due to her mother's intrusive interference and goes away once Gwen apologizes to her for her behavior. And once Gwen makes that apology and once she tells her that it's nothing to be ashamed of, the owl monster shrinks and becomes smaller and less threatening. It's still there, but it's no longer in control. Ida is able to overpower it instead, regaining control of herself in her owl beast form and no longer is a danger to herself or to others. Gwen says something here that really solidified to me that this was an allegory. And that's the fact that she said this. I made you think your curse was something to be ashamed of. <laughs> Whether we want it or not, it's a part of you. And I love every part of you. It's the truth. There is no cure for mental illness or disorders. There's medication that makes it manageable, and there's ways of dealing with it that make it dormant. But it's still a part of you, even if you don't want it. And loving yourself means also loving the parts of you that you may not necessarily want. All you can do is learn to exist. But it seems like such a monumental problem when you feel as if you're alone and when you're being made to feel like you should be ashamed of it. When Ida was alone and her mother made her feel like she was broken, the curse was too overbearing and the owl monster was huge and always took control. But with her daily elixir and support from her friends and family, it seems a lot less scary. It's still there, but it's no longer a shadow that's hanging over her and threatening to ruin everything. She no longer sees it as something she needs to hide and that's why she was able to take a stand and take control. And honestly, just like with Steven Universe Future, I really love the portrayal of mental illness being shown as this big monstrous being. With Steven, he viewed himself as a monster because of violent intrusive thinking. He thought that he was a bad person because of his thoughts that were a direct result of his trauma. Not all mental illness can be summed up to feeling sad. Some of it can be summed up to feeling like an anxious mess and like you're a horrible person because you're having these intrusive thoughts that you would never act upon, but you're afraid that you're going to. With Eater, her curse seemed scary and overbearing because she was made to feel ashamed for having it. And like she could never be worthy of love and acceptance if she had it. Two very creative ways of showing just how terrifying it is to feel alone and just how awful you feel about it. Both of these cases show that neither of these two are monsters, but they feel as if they are. And even though they may always have this issue lurking in the dark, it doesn't mean that it will always be as scary. It doesn't mean that it will always have control of you or that it will never be manageable. With the proper tools and help, you can regain control and you can overcome it. It may be slow going, like with Ida and Lilith needing to relearn magic, but you will get there with the right support system behind you. And I also really like how the show didn't forsake the elixirs. A lot of the time with these stories, the protagonists get rid of their medications by the end of the story. And while it's true that eventually you may be able to manage without them, I think it's just as important to normalize long-time usage alongside other forms of treatment. Or at least long-time usage until you know that you're comfortable enough being off them. 
You're not supposed to just take medicine without therapy as therapy is a big part of the treatment, just as medicine is used to get control on your symptoms while you're going to therapy. Being on medication, no matter for how long, is nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes your brain chemicals are just out of whack and you need it. Don't let anyone ever make you feel shame for needing medicine. And as far as in the future, ultimately we're just going to have to see how this story goes and how it concludes. But one thing is certain, Lilith and Ida have a long way to go with managing their quote unquote curse. It's not going to be easy and it's going to be full of elixirs, reconnections, and familial healing. And I for one am looking forward to it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I upload. Special thank you to my top tier patrons. Ambrose Rothwood, Jeffy Games, Brandon Nunes, The Lovely Ghosty, Sadden Suzuki, Lee Taylor, Shion Ifan, and Zachary Ansley. Because of people like them, I can continue to make content like this. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys.